Thank you for joining the broadcast of the Progressive Missionary Baptist Church, the Grandin Church on the Avenue located at 3301 King Street in the city of Berkeley, pastored by Dr. Earl C. Stuckey. Our prayer is that your faith has not wavered and your trust remains in the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember that even though we are socially distant, the truth is in you and God in heaven is the grace of all, all those who are in the spirit and in truth. At this time, we will be led in song by Sister Rejoice Marius, followed by scripture and prayer by Deacon Terrence Smith. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you uh, this day just 
thank you, first of all, dear Lord, for another opportunity to worship you. We dare not take it for granted, but we look to you, Heavenly Father. We realize that we um, uh, have a sinful nature, Heavenly Father, so we can come before you with our hands and humble hearts, just acknowledging who you are and acknowledging our sin before you, dear Lord. Whether it's, uh, we know that we fall short of your glory. Uh, so we do confess sins of omission and commission, whether in thought, word, or deed, intentional or unintentional, dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you would cleanse us from all unrighteousness this day and lead us in us once again. As we prepare for this service, we ask that you'll just bless us at this time. Bless the man of God that we bring in your word this evening, uh, dear Heavenly Father. We do pray for those who are in need of salvation, dear God. Dear Lord, you know who they are, and we just um, ask that you would just help them to open up their minds and their hearts that they can come to know your son Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Uh, and we also uh, lift up those who are uh, sick and shut in. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you would just comfort and strengthen and heal them as well. We'll do our part in this as well as you told us to do, God, and, and, and visit and pray, Heavenly Father. We just thank you and we praise you for another opportunity. We ask it all in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Amen.
looking at that which is private and personal with every saint, how they are to come before God. We understand that in the book of Matthew, chapter 14, public prayer, Jesus prays to have the food increased in order to feed the 5,000. That was done publicly. We understand that the scriptures tell us in James chapter 5, verse 14, that when one is sick, they are to call on the elders, have them come before them, anoint that individual, and pray for them. Yes. Public prayer. But what we're looking at this morning is the prayer that God has set forth that is the way that is acceptable for us to come before him. It's unfortunate that we live in a time today when people read God's word, but in many cases fail to study the details of God's word and apply it personally in the way God has suggested, or I should say commanded, that it is to be done. It's unfortunate, church. We live in a time when men have elevated those things that they have prioritized to the level of God's commandments. It's unfortunate that men have applied the rules and the regulations that they have come up with and have prioritized them more than the finer details that are readily available to all of us in God's word. And that's what we're going to look at this morning in this verse. It's not going to be long. Chapter 6, verse 6. What we see here is God has a way that's appropriate for a person to come before him. The verse is dealing with procedure in prayer. What we see also is that when you pray in a personal way, in a personal matter before God, it's not to be done in the same way publicly that you pray. It's private. Scriptures extol us to go into a secret place, a closet, a closed room. Now, a little historical background on that. In Jesus' time, when houses were built, they did not have doors. However, there was always an inner room that was built in every dwelling place that did have a door in order to secure those things that were precious, like food, those things that need to be preserved and protected. And so those things were kept in what was known as a closet or a closed space. That's the suggestion that God has given us to pray, to go into that type of place, a place that is not readily open and available to be seen or a place that's uh, not really open and that everyone has access to it. It's a place that you will go in where only you and God the focus. Now, homes we live in today, we have doors on the, in every room that, that you could possibly enter. But keep in mind, we're, we're dealing with a time in ancient days, that is when homes did not have doors. They, you didn't have rooms you can go into and be secluded. So Jesus points out a place that every household had, and that was a place to store those things that were personal, those things that were precious, those things that had to be protected. And so his suggestion is that this is the place that you go to and pray. Yes. It is to be noted, all the disciples of Christ are called to pray. Mm -hmm. Remember, the scriptures acknowledge that when Paul was saved and converted, he prayed. Now, in these instructions that Jesus has given us, Jesus cautions us not to pray in the way that the hypocrites pray. Keep in mind, a hypocrite. A hypocrite is a person who pretends to have virtues, religious beliefs, principles that they themselves do not actually possess. They may be things that this person presents. They may be things that this person says. 
They may be things that this person gives you give an impression of, but in reality, these things have no manifestation and no foundation in this individual's life. The Bible calls them hypocrites. What we understand is that in these scriptures, uh, the implication is that when you go down to chapter 23, to be specific, verse 13, excuse me, verse 15, what you find it is that the hypocrite is identified as the scribe and the Pharisee. I think it's interesting that God points out the hypocrisy of those who one would possibly least expect, the religious leaders. He points out that the leaders of the church at this time, the people who were in charge to lead Israel in a correct way, were actually the people who were presenting hypocrisy. What a lesson for us today. I'm reminded there are many a man who desires to sit in a high place in the church. There's a many a man who desires to have the place of influence and authority, never really taking note to look at the scathing way Jesus himself always chided those who were in charge of leading Israel. They were the religious hypocrites. Those who sat in the high places, those who were charged to lead the people, those who God had entrusted to teach the people the proper way to do everything. And what we see in this scripture is that the scribes and the Pharisees were not adhering to this. And so Jesus tells us not to be like them. What we find is that the hypocrite is a person that's interested in praying in such a way that people see them, that people hear them, that people are aware of what they're saying. And it says the connotation is this. These men were more interested in getting the approval of men than they were the agreement and adherence from God. They were more concerned with men hearing what they had to say than they were with God receiving what they said. And so therefore, standing in the public place and praying aloud so people could hear them and see them was something that God was against. And so in this scripture, excuse me, in this scripture, we're given a way to proceed how we should pray. Now, in the days and times that we're facing now, how much more important than ever is it for God's people to pray? Jesus cautions us not only not to be as the hypocrites and not to do as the hypocrites, but to also not to be interested in the things of interest that the hypocrites value. What's important to us is that when we go before God, we understand that he hears and receives our prayer. Now, as the hypocrites pray, two things we have to be cautious of that we're not guilty of. There were two faults primarily that they faced. The first was when they prayed, they prayed with vain glory. And the second was they prayed with vain repetitions. They prayed to, again, be recognized by men. They garnished and honored men and how they received what they said versus their praying being heard and received by God. Vain repetitions. They made mere lip service. In other words, they were just talking. The duty of praise leads us to not be ostentatious. That is, we're not to stand before people and surrender these long prayers, uh, repetitious words, uh, prayers that sound good. We're to call to stand before God and to speak that which is in an individual's heart. Why is that important? That's important, church, because you have to remember something. The Bible tells us that every word that is on your tongue, God already knows it. 
Now, who is prayer for? The Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit comes alongside and gives us help as we pray. We even don't even know what we ought to pray when we pray. Right. So who is prayer for? Mm. Prayer is on our behalf. See, I, I've always said this, well, not always, but when I got saved and grew up in grace, I realized that there was no prayer I could ever stand before God and pray that he had not already heard. Mm. Prayers are for men. Prayers are a way that when we pray, it's a living witness and testimony to us that our God is alive and he's real. Yeah. See, this scripture extols us to pray to him in secret and he will reward you openly. I think that when you consider all the religions of the world, when you think about all of the various teachings of the world, how men are to seek God and come before God and all these different gods. The one and only living and true God is the only God that tells us to pray. And we can pray in secret. And then there'd be a living witness and testimony, not just to us, but to everyone. Because he answers our prayers if we pray in secret, openly. I think that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. We have to be careful, church, not to give God simple lip service when we pray. Mm -hmm. Now, for me, when I began to study this some time back, this was life-changing. Because I always felt that it was a necessity for a man to pray for a long time. Mm -hmm. right. These scriptures are saying and teaching us the opposite. Mm -hmm. It's not necessary for a man to pray a long time. Jesus, again, gave us and taught us how we ought to pray. He says, pray in this fashion. And so uh, when we look at the prayer that we all know, of our Father, it's a prayer that includes those things that we are to be reminded to include as we pray what we need to pray for. But again, this scripture is looking at the procedure of how you go about praying and you come before God. You are to go in your secret place. I'll ask you the question again. Are you in the closet? The closet is the place that is available to all of us Amen. to go in and to spend some private and quality time talking to our Heavenly Father. Yeah. Yeah. See, when the hypocrites prayed and they played, prayed these long, ostentatious prayers, uh, what they were doing was that they, they were wanting men, again, as I said, to, to give them the approval. And they were seeking to show affection when in reality there was no affection. And what they were speaking was vain repetitions. Vain repetitions and words that had no meaning, no purpose, and no value in them. Not according to those who heard them, but according to God who hears and sees and knows all. So in this, we have an example of what we should be doing right now. We have an example of how we should be praying right now. And that's in the secret place. That's the personal place. Now, how does this apply to us today? How can we take Matthew chapter 6 and bring it down to the level and to the experience that we're having today in our world. What we see today is that God, who is in control, has allowed and brought about a situation Amen. where no Christian has an excuse for not going into the closet. Amen. See, our state, California, we live in, there's a mandate that went out. It calls for social isolation. There's a stay-at-home order. All the things in the past that we have used as excuses to be busy, to go here, to go there, to do this, to do that, God, who's in control, has removed all of those things. God has made it so that there's no need for us to be burdened with going to choir rehearsal. 
business meetings, usher board meetings, or any other study that the church would prioritize and, and give unto us as a responsibility, God himself personally has removed all of that. Now, I don't know about you, but when I look at that out of spiritual eyes, what I see, what I hear, is God is calling his people to pray. And he has allowed a situation to come about where none of us have an excuse for not praying. And not just praying, but praying the proper way. Now, I say to you, if there ever was a time men need to pray in this country, it's today. It's now. Look at what God has done. He's made it so. We have an opportunity to not only get close to him, but to demonstrate unto the world what Christians truly are. And that is the light that is in this world and on this earth. We are the salt of the earth. We are the light of this world. I find it interesting that something none of us have never seen that came from a place that most of us would never go on the other side of the world is now holding not just this country and a few other countries and a couple of cities, but is now holding the entire world hostage. None of us have ever seen COVID-19. If you have an electron microscope, you'll be able to see it. But none of us have ever seen COVID-19, but yet we know and we understand COVID-19 is real. Amen. How do we know that? Because we see the effects of COVID-19 yeah. on the lives of the individuals that it has touched. Yeah. In the same way, God says, pray mm -hmm. where nobody can see you but me. Mm -hmm. And the effects, the Bible says to us, of a righteous man's prayer, a fervent prayer, the Bible says it has a great effect. That translates into English better said, it works out a great work. It accomplishes much. So in the same way, a virus that we cannot see, but yet has had great effect on the world, in a mightier way, prayers that we don't see, how much more of a greater effect can they have when they come from God's children? We are the only ones, church, that has the ability, the opportunity, and the responsibility to lead this world in a correct way. One cannot do that unless you first understand how to humble yourself, get on your knees, go into your closet, and pray in secret to your Heavenly Father who rewards us openly. I find that in these days and times that God has made it so. He's separating the sheep from the goats, the wheat from the tares. Mm. Do a personal examination of your life. Reflect back from this moment on. Since this shelter in place has begun, how often have you taken time to pray? How often have you taken time to prioritize not just praying, but now that you've been exposed to the proper way to pray? From this moment on, my encouragement is that you would go into your secret place, that you would go into your closet, that you would prioritize that time of praying. God has called us and given us an opportunity to flex that which only Christians can flex, and that's our prayers before him. Yeah. If there ever was a time that our country, the people of our nation, and the people of our world need Christians to pray, it's now. Yeah. It is my prayer, church, that Something has been said to you this morning that would be a source of encouragement.
encouragement that would lead you to continually remember that you have an opportunity to do what another one on this planet can do, and that's to go into the secret place and pray to your Father in secret and allow Him to answer your prayers openly and publicly. As we go into the go into the invitation, because now the doors of the church are open, we're going to have the song of our souls.
words of Paul. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. Pray without ceasing. And now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all the things you have asked or think of. Unto him be all might, power, and majesty, world without end. And the church said, Jesus. 